What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mordi J. It's Monday Mistakes. Um, My allergies and everything is all off, man. It's all off, and it all started Sunday morning. Sunday morning, I woke up. I said, ow, <laughs> the hell's wrong with me? Then I drank a bottle of DayQuil. Man, my body just ain't been right. It was like 60 degrees. Then it dropped down to like 40 degrees. Then it was like 50 degrees. Then it started raining. And I said, damn, man, I just can't get right. Every day I'm fighting for my life over here. I can barely talk. I sound ridiculous, but we got to do Monday mistakes. One thing we got to do is Monday mistakes. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Monday mistakes where we take three or four characters from Friday's episode and we figure out where they went wrong and how we can lead them down the right path. Or, or is the future a little dim for them? You know, every character can't make it. We do know that Meech, Terry, Nikki, Lucille, Charles, uh, Bryant, we do know, like, everybody's about to make it, though. So it's like, we really, we can't really do too many predictions. Oh, man. Hey, Eric, here we go, bro. We still don't trust you. We still don't trust you. <laughs> all right, all right. Let me see. Do we have any stories for another day? No, we ain't got no stories. We ain't got no stories. Uh, let me think. Oh, Friday night, after we got off the live, you know, I took my daily nap today, too. After we got off the live Friday night, I I stepped out and went and got me like a little drinky drink, you know me, just to be social, you know, it's just to be social. Man, let me tell you something. Meech got him a new love interest. I might have me a new love interest. I know it seems like every week I'm getting a new one, but maybe this one might be the real deal. But then again, maybe it won't be because Meech was only in St. Louis for one episode and we getting back on the road down to Atlanta. Now I'm waiting for Meech to get settled down, man. Meech needs to find him a nice location, get there, and just chill. Just chill. Oh, man. Let me ask you guys this. Who made the biggest mistake this week? Who made the biggest mistake? Uh, first of all, who characters do we have? Meech, Terry. Those two were a must. Oh, little. Little Nikki. Meech, Terry, little Nikki. Lucille, Charles. Bryant, Jen. Carter. Jay Pusha, Kia, Markeisha. So we only got eleven characters this week. Well, only that's kind of that's kind of a lot of characters. Mm. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I feel bad right now too. I feel bad. Jay Pusher made the biggest mistake. I don't know. Well, well, Jay Pusher, when when we say mistake, Jay Pusher mistake was remember when they called, they were like, hey, we want that money. He was like, fuck that. Two hundred thousand dollars to get them back, one hundred thousand dollars on each one of their heads. I'm like, hey, uh, you need to chill, brother. You kind of need to chill a little bit. Oh, and what up, Ron Dad with Miss K? I'm going to tell y'all something. I tried to watch All-American this weekend, like the first two episodes. Ain't no way. Ain't no way I can sit down and do reviews of that no more. Oh, my goodness. I don't even know what's going on, but it seemed like they still in high school over there. I said the biggest mistake would be me bringing that shit to my channel again. We stopped when they graduated. We were good right then and there. Oh, my goodness. I watched the first episode. I see. We still don't trust you. We still don't trust you. So we not we not doing all American, y'all. I'm sorry. I tried. 
I tried. It was terrible. We got Shogun episode nine tomorrow. We got to talk about six to nine tomorrow. Ugh, six to nine. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into this. My name is Monday J. We do this each and every Monday. It's called Monday Mistakes. Shout out to Monet from Power Book 2 Ghost, a.k.a. Mary J. Blige. If it wasn't for her making steaks at her little bar where they have no customers, we would have never had a Monday Mistakes. But ever since then, every Monday we do this. Three or four characters, we talk about where they went wrong, try to fix the situation. Luckily for us, we were only in St. Louis for one day. So we get to head back down there. But then we got Glock and Angel and Angel and switch sides on us. Man, it's a lot of bullshit. All right. Let me know who we're going to start with. We're going to do it right this week. I don't know what we did last week. Last week, we, we got sidetracked a little bit. But when I say we, I mean you all. You all said something, and we didn't really get to do too much mistakes. You know what I mean? We didn't get to do too many mistakes last week. We got a little carried away. But let me see. Oh, I can tell you one of the mistakes. Brian, see, and y'all be telling me all the time. In the case of five-month-old Jemiah Julius, you are not the <laughs> I tell y'all all the time on my channel. We love the kids, but we say, fuck those kids. You know what I mean? Brian's biggest mistake was teaching these two knuckleheads when they were younger how to play baseball, teaching them how to bunt, teaching them how to tie their shoes. Brian's biggest mistake was giving back to the community. Now, they say, Mo, do you give back to the community? Yes, I do volunteer work. But do I volunteer to help with the kids and organize sports? No. I was never a coach. I could coach. I coached the girls' flag football team. We got a championship. But the first year, I was upset. I couldn't be the coach. They had to make me chill. I got fired in the middle of the season because I was yelling at the women because they out there laughing and playing around, drinking beer and drinking drinks, going out to the game, bullshit. I'm like, hey, man, if I'm going to be coaching, I'm trying to win. They over here playing around. <laughs> I'm like, hey, 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 get your ass out of there. I'm subbing people out. They husbands on the sideline. I'm they nigga, shut the fuck up, man. I'm trying to win this shit. Everybody know I'm trying to win. Oh, let them have fun, Mo. They're going to have fun on the sideline. Get them out of here. So I ended up getting fired from being the coach uh, my second year out here. Then um, I got hurt doing basketball, and we got intramural, uh, intramural basketball, and we had, like, two girls playing on the team. So, you know, the other team, they would, like, start girls. No disrespect to the girls, I wasn't starting the girls on my team. We only had two. Now, Lauren, she used to be able to shoot. Lauren used to be able to shoot. But that's my secret weapon off the bench. When we get up by 30, 40 points, Lauren, get in there. Shoot the lights out. But when we start off, I'm putting all the dogs in. You know what I mean? Not them Drake niggas. All the dogs. I'm trying to win. We ain't. Look, I got to go to work. 7.30 to 4. I ain't trying to get out here at 7.30 at night. To be playing around and joking and being friends with them niggas on the other end. No, 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 no. We trying to beat the shit out of these niggas. We trying to win. So on the weekend, I can talk a little bit of shit. But I was the referee for the kids' soccer. I ain't. I don't know nothing about soccer, but I was the referee. I was just blowing the whistle. Pause. <laughs> you! They didn't even do nothing. You're out of here. Get them out of here. All right. I think that was Brian's biggest mistake was training these young boys when they were little. Nah, for real. Like, think about it, man. I know this is a sob story and you guys probably don't give a fuck, but just think about it. I'm like 30 years old. I'm overseas. My chances to go to the NFL are slim to none. My chances to go to the NBA. I knew in the eighth grade I wasn't going to the NBA, but I get over here. I rejuvenate my my youth. I'm out here. I'm dominating. I'm the best nigga they got on this base. I done played for a Euro League championship at the age of 28 when I first got over here. I'm like, hey, bro, I got the taste of victory. Now, we only got second place. We went over to France to play, and we only got second place. 
but I ended up getting the championship my last year. I was 32 years old. I cried. They presented us the trophy. I was like, <laughs> oh, did everything myself. I'm holding the trophy up. The team is trying to touch the trophy. I'm like, back up. I did this. I'm the MVP. I'm the captain. I'll let y'all know when it's okay to touch the trophy. But right now it's me. I'm holding the trophy up, crying and shit. They announced my name over the base. The best nigga to ever play. Spain Dollar Mirror for his base. Germany. <laughs> I'm in good touch. All right. Give me a character. We'll go ahead and get started. What up, Matthew? We still don't trust you. Vince. All right, yeah, let's do a little uh let's let's talk about Vince. It wasn't really a mistake. Well, actually, now real talk. Hey, Eric, I'm gonna go up to my old base one of these weekends. I'm gonna take a picture of that that 2017 trophy, man. It was a beautiful day. Yeah, let's talk about Vince real quick. Cause I mean, he is a new character. We see what Marquise is doing. When the hell did she talk to Vince? Oh, she got pulled over. Hey, Eric, check your uh, check your Instagram. Eric, check your Instagram. All right. So this guy, Vince, we need to do a little bit of digging and investigating on Vince. Because we didn't really get to, Friday. I don't remember really talking about him that much. I mean, we mentioned him, but we need to go in depth. Pause on going in depth. But we need to figure out what the fuck is wrong with this guy. Now, Vince is an old security guard for boom. Vince is an old security guard at boom. We got his number 555-2233. And we found out that Vince kind of eats crowns because of the way he wrote on this ticket now no disrespect to any of our police officers you know what i'm saying we support the boy uh the boys in blue boys in blue come straight for you vince's mistake is see Sometimes in life, you try to level up too fast. You know, everyone wants that shortcut in life. Everyone wants to be able to go from making $1 to a million dollars. You know, I always tell you, people say, oh, give me a million dollars. I'm going to flip that million dollars into $10 million. No, they're not. If you were to give somebody a dollar right now, I guarantee you they're not going to be able to flip that dollar into $10. So. Don't listen to anybody when they tell you that. Oh, man, you gave me $30,000 right now. Ooh, I'd make that 100. No, you won't. You won't do a damn thing but blow that 30,000. Now, me, on the other hand, I'm not going to make no guarantees. Me, on the other hand, you give me 30,000 right now, I'm going to put 30,000 in my accounts. I'm probably going to put about 25 into the stocks. I'm probably going to use five on some other shit. But, you know what I mean? I'm just going to let that shit ride. You know what I mean? I ain't about to flip nothing for you. But, the reason I'm saying all of this is because Vince is trying to go from boom security to police officer to Marquisha. Now, the reason, oh, he's officer 777, so this nigga think he lucky. I ain't even noticed that. Y'all ain't even put me on the game last week. But what Vince is trying to do is go from doorsman to condo. Now, you can't make that kind of jump, especially when you the police. Now, Marquise is driving around in the Acro Legend. Now, Acro Legends are top of the line, okay? You got Hondas and then you got Acros. See, me, I was an Acro gentleman. You know what I mean? I had an 88 Acro Legend, a 95 Acro Legend, a 2011 TL. No, TSX. I'm an Acroman. 
Now, don't get me wrong. I've seen them new Honda Civics. I've seen one on base. And Honda got this new car that's coming out. I think it's electric for 31000 I said, them are kind of nice. But Vince right here is trying to do too much. He's trying to go from ex-security guard to boom, big dope dealer's girlfriend. You can't do that. You can't do that. So you gotta you gotta tiptoe your way in the game. You gotta mess with. You gotta start being involved with some like local drug dealers' girlfriends. You can't go straight up the ladder to a nigga's girl that you used to do security for. That only works in the movies, and unfortunately, this is a TV series and not the movies. Do y'all think that Vince was a fool for believing Marquisha? And plus, matter of fact, no, no, no. Now was he a fool? Do you guys think he observed the way Marquisha was moving when she was with Boom, if he was doing security for Boom? Like, would you notice, like, okay, Marquisha moves a little funny? Damn, that should move fast. I believe they adulted before. What's adulted? Paid bills? Um... What's adulted, Kendall? I need I need details. I don't know what adulted mean. Like when I hear adulted, I'm thinking get up, pay bills, get up, went to work. What's adulted mean? You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, never mind. I know what you mean. You mean Terry and uh I mean, yeah, Terry and Marquis. Oh, okay. Okay, I, I get what you're saying. My bad. I ain't know what adulted mean. All right, that's oh, pillow in. There we go. Okay. Okay, now I get what you're talking about. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Y'all think so? Hey, put a one in the chat if you think uh, Vince got a piece. I don't know, man. Marquisha seemed like you got to have a little bit of, you know what I'm saying? You got to have a little bit of money. I don't know. I don't think I don't think they did anything. Man, first lady of BMF uh show shows Marquisha was a part of the problem in distance with Meech Terry in the business. Also, y'all seeing that Vince got a piece of this. Well, I mean, the brother's in shape. She did take the number though. She did take the number. She did take the number. I'm telling y'all, man, that dude, Vince, I'm going to show y'all how Vince is writing, man. This dude, this is how Vince is writing. Vince seen her, pulled her over. He said, oh, shit, I got to get her number. He said. That's how Vince wrote his name on there. <laughs> that nigga Vince Porter. Oh shit, that's Marquisha. <laughs> Here you go. Here's here's my number. Like, hey, bro. Oh, not not they doing. Oh, na hey, hey. Why was Marquisha jealous? Why was Marquisha jealous this episode, y'all? Someone answer that. I I just found out. We just cracked the code. We just cracked it. Why was Marquisha jealous this episode? This is Monday mistakes. They ain't letting we ain't letting nothing, 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 nothing slide. Why was Marquisha jealous this episode before we get back to uh, Vince running into Terry? Because we know Vince is trying to get in with Marquisha, but this ain't the time nor the place for him. And we know that he's observed what Marquisha was doing. You know, you know when you see some sicey shit. But sometimes when that demon gets to talk, you know that little thing that be on your shoulder. Damn, who the fuck? Mo, 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 go get out of it. Go get Hey, chill, 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 nigga. Chill, chill. What the fuck? The little devil be sitting right there on your shoulder. Mo, Mo, Mo. Hey, yo, yo, yo. That devil was on Vince's shoulder, and this may have been his biggest mistake. All oh, Wanda got the, the van. Y'all know why she was jealous? Let me show you. I'm going to show you exactly why she was jealous that Marquisha, I mean, that, no, Marquisha. Marquisha was jealous of Wanda because Wanda got a new van. But it's not that she got a new van. It's that she was riding around in some bullshit. Look at this. 
Look at this. No one even peeped this out, but that's what you come to my channel for. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Man, they got these raggedy ass car cover seats over these. Look at this seat. The original seat is tan, but they put these seats covers over it. Oh, they put the generic seat covers over this. They thought we wasn't going to peep that. That's what it was. Look at this car. They got the seat cover. She mad. She riding around in this old ass Acura. She got that new 1990 town and country. Well, she didn't get the town and country. Edition. She got the regular one. Markeisha riding around here as a bad bitch in a busted ass car. Oh, that's why she mad. Look at this. Damn. Hey, look at look at damn, this shit all sun faded and stuff. Oh, now I see why she mad. Now we got to do a full full search. <laughs> <laughs> they got her in this bucket. They got her in this bucket. I had an acrid just like this. So uh the first time I sued it, nigga, he ran into the back of my car with a kind of like this car. But it tore up my uh my trunk and my trunk barely closed. But my back door, you had to like uh, uh, uh. I had an accolade, I had the 88 on some 16s. Oh, that's why. I ain't even peeped that till now. Look at that. They got seat covers over. Oh, that's why Marquis shut. I'll be damned. Hey, put a won't they do it in the chat. All of this is because she's riding around in the bucket. She ain't grateful my nigga Terry got her in an Acra. He could have you riding around in a Toyota Corolla. You in an Acra legend, baby. Don't forget it. Legend. Damn. I was sitting there looking. I said, wait a minute. So in my... I don't know. It might be cloth. I never had a cloth vehicle. Well, of course, my old my old school was cloth, but I never had cloth. I always got leather seats. But in my 95 Acura, I had seat covers over that because the only reason I had seat covers, I had TVs in my headrest. So when I had the TVs in the headrest with the seat covers, you got the one for the headrest. I used to put the headrest covers over it. So that's why I just went ahead and put the seat covers over the front seats. But that was just to hide my TVs, though. It is the 90s. So if it's the 90s, and this is like an 88, an 89, a 90 Acra Legend, there shouldn't be no reason for car covers. This car should be brand new, immaculate, off the showroom flow. He got Marquisha riding around in the bucket. Well, guess what? You got to decide in life. Do you want the house or do you want a brand new car? You can't have both. Because, see, Wanda, she didn't get the house. Wanda didn't get the condo. We turned the condo into a trap house. So, Wanda, we can afford to get you a new van because you ain't got the condo. Markeisha, you got a mansion and you riding around in this bucket. Ooh. Ooh. Now y'all got me wanting to go find my Acre and show y'all how I was living. We still don't trust you. Damn. Okay. So that's why Markeisha mad. Markeisha want a new man. She want a nigga that's going to help out with the seat. All right. There we go. Oh, man. Give me. Oh, my goodness. Give me a second, bro. My man is acting up. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Now, this is what we're talking about with Vince. He had to observe. And if he was messing with Markeisha when she was with Boom, he had to know that this is how this is how she be moving, though. You know what I mean? He had to know this is how she be moving. Now, Kendall, you can't have if you a side chick, you can't have both. You either get the car or you get a house. Now, in my book, if you my side chick, you ain't getting nothing but something to eat. And that, that's if you get that much. You know, like if I pull up, you need to have some food made or if you come through, I'll order some food. But I'm not getting you no house. I'm not, I'm not hell. I'm not even I mean, I'm not, I'll be right back, man. My damn nose, bro. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. This Monday mistakes. We're gonna get back to uh talking about Vince because he had to have noticed that Markeisha was moving foul like this when she was with Boom. Because remember, when we first seen her, she was already eyeing Terry up back when Terry was like 17 years old, even though we know 
in the state of Detroit, I mean, the state of Michigan, 17 is all right. Give me a second. But Vince had to have known. And I think, well, Friday when we were talking about, we were just talking about was Marquisha setting this up to make Terry jealous. And that's what we came up with on Friday. This is why you got to be careful. Now, I'm not saying don't be number two, number three, but when you start getting to be like number four, number five, you don't ever really want to be number two. Number three is a good place to be. Like number three, number four, that's a good place to be. Because number one got to do all the work. Number two, he's really fighting for that extra time. But when you like number three, all you got to do is wait for the bring, bring, bring. Who the? It's Marquisha, fool. All right, what up? Nothing. Terry and Boom gone. Okay. I heard you talking to some police officer now. Now he gone too. See, I'm at number four at this point. All right, you can pull up. That's it. You ain't got to worry about nothing in like number four and number five. But Vince, I don't know, man. Number five is cool, too. Number five is cool. But when you had number five, you got to start having like your own one, twos, and three. You know what I mean? Like if you had number five, you might as well just have Because like, let's be honest. Unless they just out there, out there, they're never really going to hit up number five. Number five is just something y'all stay in touch every now and then. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me see. How can I explain that? Like, if you number five in, like, modern terms, y'all just, like, you know what I'm saying? You see, like, her Instagram story or something. You know what I'm saying? Or she'll see yours. She'll just, like, like it. But y'all don't really conversate too much. You just waiting for your opportunity to move up into, like, the third and fourth slot. You really want to get to like that number three spot, but you know, four is cool. But when you in five, it's just like you on the team, but it's like, you know what I'm saying? We got, we got KD, we got Kyrie on the team. We got Curry and it's like, okay, you know, I'm here when you need me, call me. But don't, Hey, don't sleep on number five though. Number five is a good place to be because being realistic, you always know number one and number two, She'll come back to number one. She'll come back to number two, but they always going to fuck up. So just look at it in, in, in quarters. You know what I'm saying? Just like basketball. There's four quarters in a year. First quarter, they're going to be good to go. They're going to fuck up by the second quarter. Number two is going to move into like 1.5. Then you're going to slide to that number four. And then you might be able to jump number three because number three to found him something. So now you didn't went from five to four to three. It, it just works in mysterious ways. <laughs> Oh, uh, won't he do it? Oh, uh, won't he do it? But that's just that's just me, just like you know, saying back when I was back when I was you know, saying when I was active. Now I just be chilling. Right now I'm like a, you know, I got that number three spot. You know, what I'm saying Hall of Fame status. All right, so back to Vince. Now, did we agree that she called Vince up here, or Vince just ran into her because he was like, "What were you drinking?" What were you drinking? And she like a little something, something. That's my only thing. I don't know for sure if she called him up here or was he was just in the vicinity because she introduced Vince to Terry.
All right. So we're saying that she set this up. I mean, we know that she's trying to make him jealous. So she said, hey, come meet me at this bar. Terry, come meet me at this bar. She got her a dirty martini. Now, is it is it just because what I think they're trying to do, what I think they're trying to do is not only make Terry jealous, but introduce Terry to him to try to get Henry off of off of their back. Do we think it's more than just making Terry jealous? Like potentially, because we passed the threshold. We already passed the threshold, so we can talk about uh eight. Let me see. They're trying to make drug crimes federal, but we don't protect the work and the homies. I guarantee we next. Marquisha's very high class. You don't have what it takes to keep up with a woman like her. I know where you're at, and you know where I'll be. Taking Henry and BMF down will at least give us some peace. Now you hear that. He talking that bullshit, niggity. Fellas, that's one thing you'll never do is get into an argument with a man about no woman, man. That ain't no that ain't no place for you to be. That ain't no place for you to be, man. Niggas will kill you over some bullshit. And they definitely will kill you over some pussy. They definitely will kill you over some pussy. So no matter what they say, don't be tough guy. Don't be trying to stand up for somebody. Hey! Get out of here, man. That's my woman. Hey, man. Your woman should know not to be talking to these niggas. I just seen a lot of niggas get their ass whooped defending their woman. And then after they get their ass whooped, I'm hollering at their woman the next week. No lie. No lie. True story. True story. When I was down in Georgia, I was an E. I was an E3 down in Georgia. But I was older, so I was, what, 26, 20? I turned 27. So I was older, but I was low rank because I joined late. Man, I seen this guy get his ass whooped one night, and I knew who he was, like, from the gym, but I ain't know the nigga. Man, I'm telling you, he was in there. Some dude was talking to his girl. They was, like, shooting pool. Well, I don't know if they were shooting pool, but they was over by the pool. This is when I was in Warner Robins. When I tell you they commenced to whooping this nigga's ass and his girl and, like, her friends, they were, like, leaving with him. I made sure I was looking. I'm like, okay. I'm going to holler at her. Sure enough, two weeks later, she was out without that nigga. Man, I got her number. That nigga came to the gym. You know, people were talking to him like, damn, man. Yeah, man, them niggas. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm low-key listening to the story, but I ain't got nothing to do with it. So I'm listening to the story like, damn, they did whoop that nigga ass, though. I stayed there. I kept drinking. I ain't give a fuck. I ain't know that nigga. I wasn't jumping in. But two weeks later, I'd holler at his girl. Sure enough, about a month and a half later, you know, we ended up connecting and stuff. But, you know, it just happens like that. But let's see what he got to say, though. What up, Jay Hoodie? We next. Marquisha's very high class. You don't have what it takes to keep up with a woman like her. This nigga, a police officer, talking about she high class. You can't keep up with her. Nigga, I make your salary in a day. Marquisha's very high class. You don't have what it takes to keep up with a woman like her. I know where you're at, and you know where I'll be. This couldn't be me, man. This couldn't be me, man. Marquisha's high class. Obviously, I know that nigga. Do you not know she living in a mansion because of me? Whenever you see him smiling in a nigga's face, man, go ahead and count that as an L. Go ahead and count that as an L. All right, now this dude, Vince... To take it back to where we were, Vince is in the, I don't know, man. 
I think with with making Terry jealous, I think Marquisha wants to bring him on the team to at least help out and alleviate the pain that Henry is putting off in the streets. Because remember, Terry didn't want to go to war with Henry, but everyone else was like, man, Terry, let's do this, man. Let's go to war, dog. Terry's like, nah, I'm good on that. So I think Vince, he's making the mistake messing with Marquisha. Um, sometimes when you get led on, when you get led on, you just gotta, you gotta know when to end it. Like, this ain't nothing coming out of this. Like, he he going on dates with Marquisha. He know Marquisha. Like, first of all, if if I'm involved with a woman and I see that she's with this 17-year-old nigga, I'm like, man, I'm not fucking with this chick no more. Like, nigga, I don't care how much money this nigga got. You fucking with a 17-year-old? Like, come on, man. You got to look at Marquisha a little bit differently. I mean, this is the 90s, though. The niggas just didn't care. I mean, hell, look at Marquisha. She really don't give a fuck. What up, Torian? Yeah, but that's pretty much it for Vince. We think, is Vince going to make it through the season? That's the question. Is Vince going to make it through the season? Or is Terry and, and Hoop and then we'll have to take him out? So he said, yeah, he was on Boom's payroll, but you know, Boom's payroll, that shit's <laughs> insufficient funds. <laughs> Boom's payroll was over with, plus Boom in there telling. All right, let's see. Let's see. I know, hey, I know they was mad Friday when they seen that little Nikki got arrested. Vince. They should have called him Ricky. They should have called him Ricky. I think Blaze put Vince on an assignment to watch Terry. But did unless well, Miles, Miles, you might be on to something. Because Vince didn't pull her over till after the meeting with Blaze about. Oh, hold on. Let me let's just make sure we got the timeline right. Let's make sure we got the timeline right. So Terry and Blaze. Oh, OK, there we go, y'all. Hey, we got to get this one to Miles. We got to give this one to Miles. Vince. Okay, I like that. I like that. C H E. All right, let's try to let's try to make that work. Let's try to make that fit in. Let's try to make that fit in real quick. All right. So we got to sit down between Terry and Blaze. The sit down between Terry and Blaze. They're talking about having a peace offering and keeping this deal on the table. But Terry tells him no because Henry was acting up. Now he says Henry is still my daughter. Henry is still my daughter. He passes the gift back. We've been saying that Henry was going to try to get at Marquisha. So maybe Blaze leaves here. Henry, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, dad, that kid, man, he don't know what he's talking about. Well, we need to come up with something because if you're not going to cooperate, 
there. We need to get him about the picture or figure out some way to take him out. Hey, dad, he has this girl, Markeisha, I've been trying to get at. Because right now, Henry, she's distracted by Jen. But if she tells her dad about Markeisha, he used to have all the connections in the police force. He tells Vince to pull them over and start following them to infiltrate. Now he's getting closer to Markeisha to start figuring out the ins and outs. He's trying to take out them from the inside while Brian and Jen are trying to take out Blaze and Henry from the inside. Oh, man, we just got us a whole shit show over here. Hey, I like that, Miles. I like that. Yeah. Nigga, it's just big me, nigga. Boom. I'm really like that. Okay, Miles. Henry tells Blaze about Markeisha. He goes and gets Vince to go follow them and try to infiltrate BMF. Okay, that's a cool little theory right there. And now Markeisha's trying to make Terry jealous, but she don't even know that she just walked Vince right into the... Hold on. Hold on. I guarantee we next. Well, Marquisha's very high class. You don't have what it takes to keep up with a woman like her. I know where you're at, and you know where I'm Marquisha's very high class. You don't have what it takes to keep up with a woman like her. I know where you're at, and you know That could work. Because there's no way... That Vince is trying to push up on her that quick. You know what I mean? You got to play it cool. You, this nigga went from, hey, Markeisha, what's up? Here's my number. Call me to, hey, man, she's high class. Uh, excuse me, sir. I don't know if you know or not, but I've been with Markeisha for a season and a half now. I know she's high class, nigga. Do you not see these Versace frames I got on, nigga? I am the definition of high class. Do you not see this big BMF piece on, nigga? I am high class, nigga. What do you mean? What do you mean high class? Damn, if he is a part of that, that that's interesting. I like that theory, though. I like that theory. All right. We still don't trust you. We still don't trust you. Damn. All right, cool, 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 cool. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We just talked about Vince and his mistake. Well, wait a minute. We got to scale that back. We can't really call it. If we're going with Miles' theory that Vince was sent here by Blaze, this isn't a mistake. This isn't a mistake. This isn't a Monday mistake. This is a Monday move. Because if Blaze is the one sending them there, his mistake would be to go against Blaze because he would end up dead. Now, we already said he's going to make it through the season. So this can't really be a mistake unless he's really trying to get at Markeisha. Then that's the mistake, trying to get at Markeisha. But if he's doing what Blaze told him, all right, cool. You see what I'm saying? If he's trying to get at Markeisha while on the mission, now that's a mistake. But if he's just over here trying to get close, then all right, cool. So we got to let this play out. We got to let this one play out. This might not be a mistake, y'all. This might be a Monday move that we just ain't. We might not be prepared for something like this. This is a, a glitch in the matrix. We never had. We never had an unknown unknown. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes there's a known unknown, meaning we know that there's something we don't know, but we're unknowing if there is something we don't know. We don't know if this nigga is actually here by blaze. So it's an unknown unknown. It's not a known unknown. We know that this nigga gonna survive. It's unknown to us if he was sent by Blaze. But if he was sent by Blaze and it was unknown for us that he's trying to get at Markeisha because he's working for Blaze, which was the unknown that we already knew we didn't know, which would make this an unknown unknown. Oh, my head is hurting now. You have a known unknown, but now we got us an unknown unknown. Oh, I've never, I got to write that down. Unknown unknown. I've never had an unknown unknown on TV. An unknown unknown.
What is a known unknown? An uncertainty of a known magnitude, consequence, structure, or probability and characteristics. Something that we know that we don't know. So what is an unknown unknown? It's some shit that we know we don't know. Oh, my goodness. An unknown unknown is the un unidentified information an individual or organization may realize that such information exists and is relevant to them, but its uh, specifics are completely outside of their scope of awareness. So an unknown unknown is where we're at right now. It's unidentified information, an individual or organization. We just read that. Okay, unknown unknown. All I ever knew about was a known unknown. We know that there's some shit we don't know, but an unknown unknown, this is outside of the scope of what we're used to thinking. We're only been thinking one level here. Hey, everyone, everyone put a shout out to Miles in the chat. Miles just opened up the channel to another level. We got to start being prepared for unknown unknowns. When we seen the kidnapping happen in the trailer, that was a known unknown. We knew that someone was getting kidnapped, but we didn't know who. See, that's a known, uh, a known unknown. But now we got an unknown. We don't know if this nigga is here because of Blaze, and we don't know if he's trying to get at Markeisha because of Blaze, or he's trying to get at Markeisha because he want to get at Markeisha. Oh. I might have to drink some tea like Kendall said, and I might have to call my boss and say, I can't come in tomorrow, man. My brain is on fire right now. I've never thought about an unknown unknown. There's shit that you don't know that you don't know. Now, that really got me thinking. Now, now I'm trying to think about all the unknown unknowns that we've been going through. I got to put that on the shirt. Unknown unknowns. I like that. Unknown unknowns. They never taught me that. Damn. All right. All right, here we go. Who we got next? Who we got next? Monday mistakes. We got to figure this thing out. We got to get this thing in order. So Vince... We're not calling Vince a Monday mistake quite yet. It's an unknown unknown, so it might be a Monday move. Shout out to Miles. Shout out to Miles. Mm -mm -mm. Damn, that was a good one, though. That was a good one, though. I like that. What happened to ham booty shorts? Oh, man, that was a long, long time ago, man. I forgot what we... Oh, that was from uh The Last of Us, ham booty shorts. That was from The Last of Us. Oh, I got... Hold on, let me, let me see. Let me see if it went through. Kid. Come on, what's wrong with this internet? Now I want to act a damn fool. Yeah, I remember that hand booty. Oh, I ain't got it back yet. Yeah, so I gotta get uh, I gotta get my domain back for like my clothing stuff. But it should be what well, they say it's gonna take like 10 days to process. So once I get my uh my URL and everything back, I'll have that up and we'll be able to start putting uh you know saying clothing back on there. But right now I don't have I had lost the um the URL, I forgot about it, man. But all right, cool, 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 cool. Lucille, did Lucille make any mistakes except for wanting to be grown? All right, we'll talk about Lucille. Let me see. A girl line with bedazzled items. If they make be uh, bedazzled items, then it'll be on there. But 
I'm not about to make no bedazzled items. I don't even know how to do that shit. <laughs> if they <laughs> if they got it on the website, I'll put some stuff on there. I know um Kindle wanted like the crop top stuff. That's on there, but yeah, like any I, I don't make the products, I just get like the logos and stuff put on there. Uh when, oh, okay, here we go. He said Jay Pusher was the mistake. Hey, facts. That nigga said, Carter! Carter! Like Carter just about to say, hey, man, pull over the van, man. Let me out, man. My brother called me. Hey, yo, let me out. Yo, let me out. All right, we got Lucille. Let's see where Lucille. See. What we got? Give me a second. So Lucille, oh, remember I was telling y'all about one, two, three. What I tell y'all, number one and number two, they gonna always be conflicted. That's why you want to be like number three at the closest because number three, you're up under the radar. Number four, no one knows about you. Number five, no one cares about you. But that's why you want to be like number three, number four because you ain't got to deal with all this extra nonsense that they got going on. You know what I mean? I got you. I'm, I'm gonna see what they got on there. We'll we'll get that stuff uh, situated. I got um. I want to get some stuff up before Ghost drops, so we'll definitely have that. Uh, all right. As of right now. All right, Lucille. Lucille. First of all, they're just separated right now, right? Would we consider this a separation or this isn't really a separation? What would y'all call the relationship right now that they have? Are we are we are we calling this a separation because they still in the same crib? Now, when I think separation, like we don't live together no more. We still in the same house. We still go together. As young Miami was a, we go together real bad. Or is it just like because if we if we separate it, but we still living together, am I authorized to bring other women over to the crib? Because I mean, technically, she did have Dr. Reese was over there. Maurice was over here. So if I'm in this situation, am I allowed to bring some female friends over? I got some damn bitches I can go. I don't know what I would do without y'all, but I'm a ball to the day I fall, ball, 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 as long as my bitches love me, my bitches love me, my bitches love me, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? What up, Joseph? Because if I'm at the crib and she's going on countless dates with Dr. Reese and Dr. Reese is the filet mignon Filet mignon. Charles don't even know what filet mignon is. Filet mignon. What is this? Filet mignon. This got to be something. What is this? Tuna? What is filet mignon? Charles don't know what no filet mignon is. And you sending roses to the crib? Come on. There's a level of disrespect here. I got to be able to bring something to the crib and knock something down. You know what I mean? <laughs> Mo. Mo, hey, yo, 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 chill, chill, chill. Me and my wife trying to make this thing right. She's with niggas. She's with niggas. Hey, yo, 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 yo. You know what I mean? You gotta... I'm trying to get me some touching in. Lucille's in the back. Was well, she in the front seat of a car talking about, oh, no, I just want to have fun. Can I go have some fun? Charles been hitting the weights. Charles been doing the, 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 the wallpaper he's been doing he's been fixing everything in the house and he can't have no fun but Lucille's out. damn man why they doing my dog Charles like this
<laughs> Nika, I'm trying to figure out what the filet mignon is. I ain't never had no filet mignon. We had steak that that meat ball, but we ain't never had no filet mignon. What filet mignon? I heard it was small. I heard the filet mignon was small anyway. I don't want none. I don't want no filet mignon. I don't want that shit. Filet mignon. Nah, you want some steak around here. Now, I'm trying to figure out, what does Lucille want? Is Lucille just keeping, like, is she keeping Charles here just in case the Dr. Reese situation don't work out? See, me and Charles, we thought Filet Mignon came from the sea or something. Charles ain't no. Charles ain't no. They ain't got no Filet Mignon at Wendy's. We used to Wendy's doubles. You know what I'm saying? Wendy's fries are lovely. Matter of fact, bring me home a chili. You know what I mean? Bring me home a chili with some extra crackers. Uh, let me get a Dr. Pepper. You know what I'm saying? Let me get some chicken nuggets. Hey, when did this... Matter of fact, let me see something. When did Wendy's damn we we a little we a little uh behind on the timeline but Wendy's came out with spicy nuggets in 2009. Wendy's got the best nuggets out of Burger King, McDonald's, and Wendy's. Wendy's got the best nuggets, especially they spicy nuggets with some barbecue sauce. Oh, I gave me a little 10 piece. So Lucille was not there when they came out with the uh the spicy nuggets. Wendy's introduced nuggets, well, the spicy nuggets in 2009. So he wasn't there. So Charles never got to experience the free nuggets. All right. Now, I know Lucille's been talking to Dr. Reese. Dr. Reese came over there and helped deliver the baby. But at what point does she tell him, hey, you can't send this shit to the house? Now, remember, remember, she told him that she's still married. She's still married. He's calling the house. At some point, she has to say, hey, bro, you can't be sending the shit to the crib, bro. Like, when we talk, I'll let you know. You know what I mean? That was always my thing. When I'm number two, number three, don't call my phone. Don't text my phone. When we meet up, we come up with our times and stuff. And if you do text me, delete the message. Don't save my number. Delete the message. I got a lot of I got a lot of uh, sevens in my phone number. So you know if it's me or not. But Dr. Reese is moving a little bit differently. But this is part of. Lucille allowing him to now Dr. Reese is different because he know I kind of got Charles boxed into the corner so I can apply that pressure and he ain't gonna do nothing but Lucille's gotta tell him at some point hey bro you can't be calling the house you can't be sending flowers while this nigga Charles is here man Charles is crazy Charles might whoop a nigga ass on accident not because he want to on accident and that happens a lot of times too Exactly, Nicole. Hey, Reese, chill, nigga. Ladies, one thing you ain't never got to worry about, Mo, you ain't got to worry about me sending nothing to the house. You ain't got to worry about me calling. You ain't got to worry about me texting. You ain't got to worry about me giving a fuck because I'm not going to do none of the above. You hit me up. You hit me up. Hey, what you doing, Mo? I'm on a live. What you doing after? You can come through. Don't worry about what I'm doing after. You can come through. That's all I'm going to say. If you want to come through, you can. What time are you going to be off? Just come through. I hit the buzzer. And come on in. Just go upstairs. Chill. Chill, 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 chill. Don't, hey, hey, don't come in here. Don't come in here. 
I'm a single man on these in, uh, on these internet streets. You know what I mean? Don't come in here. I got locked the door so they can't come in here. Go upstairs. Go upstairs. Don't come over here. <laughs> Go upstairs. Chill. Hang out. Grab a drink or something. Watch TV. Play with blind kids. That's what Tony Montana said. That ain't me saying. That's what Tony Montana said. He said, man, do something. Play with blind kids. Anything beats waiting around for me to fuck you. Like, what? This nigga Tony Montana's crazy. All right. So from here, Lucille hasn't calmed this nigga Dr. Reese down. Uh, oh, that's that's one thing too. Would I hide the flowers and take credit for them? Nah, see, well. It depends. It depends. Now, this is this nigga's wife. <coughs> this is this nigga's wife. Would I hide? Ah, that's a tough one, RC. Because if you hide the roses or if you take credit for them, you're not going to. One thing I learned and I learned early, don't put yourself in fucked up situations. If you hide the roses or if you take credit for them, when Charles, I mean, when Reese asked, hey, did you get the roses? She can say, what roses? Oh, Charles. Now she's going to definitely be mad at you. So what you could do in this situation, because this is your wife. This isn't just like somebody you're messing with. Just put the car, take the car. <laughs> See, I don't know how to answer this because I'm answering it from my perspective, like of, of what the fuck I would do. But what I can say to get you in this situation to try to get you out of it, just put the roses on the table, but take the car. Because now it's got her wondering, oh, Charles. And he's like, hey, man, I don't, you know, I don't know. So when she goes to talk to Reese, he's like, did you get the roses? Oh, those are from you? Because you didn't take credit for them, but you didn't discredited it for you know what I'm saying like I didn't say they weren't for me and I didn't say they were for me it's just roses you see what I'm saying because he ain't gonna ask about the card so yeah the only thing you can do just set the roses on the table remove the card and leave the room do not be in the room when she comes in there but like Nicole said I'm like hey what the fuck hey don't be having no niggas send no flowers to the crib because I already assumed the flowers for Nikki when they showed up I'm thinking a little nigga didn't send them for Nikki but now I see this from Lucille. Oh, no, nah, man. All right, look. We might not be together, but we together. Man, you not better have niggas send the shit to the crib. No, 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 no. <laughs> nah, that's, that's too far. That's too far, man. Like, I'm trying to think. Like, when I found out my relationship wasn't going, like, the right way, I'm trying to think. Nah, I wasn't on no shit like Charles. I told her, don't be talking to no nigga while you're in my house, though. And that was the last time for that. And then she was up and out of there, like, a week later. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not going out like Charles. A nigga like me gonna speak his mind. I ain't gonna lie to you. I... I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna bite my tongue. I ain't, nah, I ain't with all of that. Hey, man, that nigga, hey, you gonna be with that nigga? Then you need to leave and go be with that nigga. Then, like, I'm not, man. I ain't gonna sugarcoat it for you. Hey, don't be on no Facetime with no nigga in my crib. Hey, whatever y'all got going on, you gonna be with that nigga? Gets to step it. I already told y'all when she called. Hey, can you, can you mail my stuff to the states? I threw that shit to trash. All right, man, you better get the fuck out of my face with that goofy shit. <laughs> I put up with some bullshit, but when it gets to goofy shit, that's when I'm like, all right, we got dumb stuff, but we got stupid shit. When we get to stupid shit, I start rearranging shit. But yeah. See, and the thing about Lucille, it's not only is her mistakes rolling over with Charles, it's spilling over to her kids. Neither one of the kids can trust their mama. Little Nikki, she know that she got googly eyes. She told her mama, you need to be on birth control. At what age does the uh, the cycle stop? 
I know we get a little off topic, but I'm just trying to go with the flow of the show. Because little Nikki told her that maybe she needs the BC, even though little Nikki be popping them BC like Skittles. I'm on another 30. Like, whoa, hey, yo, Nikki, chill. And then she come over here talking to Terry, talking about, oh, Terry, you just like your daddy. Whole time, whole time she got niggas sending letters like they in high school. Remember she told Charles this ain't no high school game, but then tells Dr. Reese, I feel like a high school school girl. What? What? I was confused myself. I was confused myself. Menopause age. Yeah, I'm saying what age is that though? Like I think that's like 40s, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I don't know, and I really don't well, I do care because I want to know what age. Oh, between the ages of 51 and 52, according to Dr. Cole. Menopause that occurs before 45 is considered early menopause. Well, obviously, it's earlier than 51. That occurs before the age of 40 is called premature. So 40 is premature, 45 is early, and then 50 to 50. All right. Little Nikki is disrespectful. Little Nikki is disrespectful. Hey, put a five in the chat if you ever talk to your mom like Nikki talked to her mama. <laughs> <laughs> taking birth control is responsible I can't pop them you only take them once a day yeah I, I know it's being responsible but we seen little Nikki after uh, Wanda had that baby little Nikki went up there and took the whole 30 but to tell your mama you need to be on birth control that's some wild shit right there That's some wild shit. Telling your mama you need to be on birth control. <laughs> mama, you need to be on birth control with your fast ass. Uh, excuse me, young lady. Damn. Oh, uh, Cutie Pie didn't watch the director. See, I be watching the director cup, y'all. I mean, the director's cut, y'all. I seen 30 of them. I, 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 like, damn, a little gremlin. <laughs> DJ said, I wouldn't be watching today if I talked to my mama like that. All right. So, Lucille, everybody, damn, man, it's messed up when everybody in the family knows. So what do you think, <clears throat> little Nikki? Like I never had this kind of conversation with like my sisters. Well, my sisters were early, uh, older than me, so they would never like talk to me. But what is it like? Hey, Terry, Mama's fucking with the doctor. What doctor? The nigga, the doctor that that delivered your baby, the one you wasn't here for, the one that your you know what I'm saying your chef told on you. What? Mama messing with the doctor. What up, the hood? Hey, the hood, we trying to figure out what did Nikki say to Terry? Did she say Mama fucking the doctor or mama messing with the doctor? What y'all think? Mama fucking the doctor, mama messing with the doctor, or mama been looking at the doctor with googly eyes? Like, how do you have that conversation with a sibling? <laughs> hey, mama, mama fucking the doctor. What? No, nah, she ain't fucking the doctor. Nah, for real. They be out and about for Lamy Young. <coughs> Golly. I apologize, y'all. That's on me. Oh, man. 
Uh, I need my hair braided. Uh, there we go. I like that one. I think mama humping the doctor, T. T, I think mama humping the doctor. Humping. Everybody's talking all this mess about me. Why won't they just let me live? Tell me why. <laughs> I don't need permission. Oh, it's my prerogative. It's my prerogative. <laughs> I can do what I want to do. It's my prerogative. <laughs> <laughs> it's my prerogative. <laughs> I can do what I want to do. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Lucille in there wilding out. Oh. Oh, my God. I can do what I want to do. It's my prerogative. Damn, Lucille. Lucille out here creeping, too. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Oh. All right. Let's continue on, man. We getting a little sidetracked. <laughs> Mama on her sexy red. <laughs> Get it, Lucille. Get it, Lucille. Girl, you know this ass super fat. I ain't lying, y'all. <laughs> Lucille. Pound town. Just left pound town. Lucille got in the car and told this nigga, no talking. I just want to be young. I want to have fun. I'm like, what? Even, even Angel. Even Angel wasn't this aggressive with this nigga Meech, and, and Meech took her out the hood. Meech took Angel out the hood. She did a little slow dance for him. Fucking Lucille, on the other hand, she said, uh-uh, no talking, nigga. Uh-uh. Ain't no talking. <laughs> I saw you standing in the rain. <laughs> Lucille in here, hey, getting straight to it. You know, as a guy, you got to play it smooth. You know, back in the days when it was acceptable to be kissing these girls, you had to play it cool. You know what I mean? You're like 15, 16 years old. You had to play it cool. See, if you can get a little kiss, Lucille said, no, no, no. I want to have some fun. Oh, girls just want to have fun. This nigga Lucille talking about, I'll wait on you. She said, no, nigga, ain't no waiting on me. We getting it on. Let's get it on. Baby, let's get it on. He said, You gotta choose between one of us. He said, Nigga, I ain't choosing between them. One of you niggas, Charles is in the gym, and you a doctor. Uh, sometimes I want the cake and to eat it too. Sometimes I want the doctor too. Sometimes I want an unemployed nigga. An unemployed nigga will blow your back out. That's what Lucille said. She said a nigga with no job ain't got nothing to lose. He ain't got to worry about getting tired because guess what? He can sleep all day. He ain't got no job. Dr. Reese, you on call. You can't really do what you want to do. So she just want to have fun with you. When she want that back blown out, she'll let Charles creep up in that room. Charles went in there, did his one, two step, and she sent that nigga back to the other room and said, don't you leave this house, Charles. I'll be back a little bit later, Charles. I'm going to go have some fun, just a little bit of kissing to get warmed up. And you come in here, do your thing, Mr. 300 Curls. I seen you on the biceps in there. 
Then when I come home, you do what you do. Then we go get into our arguing, and I'm going to go holler at Dr. Reese the next night, get some filet mignon after I work me a 12-hour shift, get up off my feet. Every now and then, I want to put some heels on, Charles. I'm tired of walking around with these nine slips on when I'm over at Wendy's working my 12-hour shifts. Bring your unemployed ass on in here. Oh. Yeah, I know what's going on here. Yeah. Every now and then, every now and then, she bring that unemployed nigga Charles in the room and let him tear that thing up a little bit. But when she want to go out and be wine and dine, you know what I'm saying? When she want to go out and feel like a lady, you make me feel like a natural woman. A woman. She goes to Dr. To Dr. Reese. But when she want to hear Flashlight. She called that nigga Charles in there. <laughs> oh, Charles. Yes, Lucille. Come on in here. You got 15 minutes. You on the clock. 15 minutes. Hold on. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Uh, Charles, you on the clock now. I got that 12 hour. I got to be at work at 6 a.m. You need to get in here, Charles. All right. Uh, Nikki, close your door. Oh, yeah. That nigga Charles is about to go to work. All you see is that nigga Charles run up in that room. What do you see? <laughs> that, nigga, <laughs> that nigga Charles' hand go across that bed. You already know what time it is. Like, damn, that nigga Charles be in there working. That nigga got in that bed behind Lucille. That damn hand went up her head. Like <laughs> oh, man. Shit. Sometimes, sometimes it be like that. You know what I mean? Sometimes it be like that. All right. So we all admit Lucille is moving reckless. She does have to let uh, Dr. Reese uh, know something. Like, come on, man. Reese, you got to chill. You got to chill. Now, I'm not I'm not trying to cut you guys short tonight. But we could do one more character. But I, I, I definitely got to go take some meds and stuff, man. My body is, man. And it's what, like. Man, it's raining right now, too, and it's only, like, 38 degrees. Like, damn, bro. Trying to get ready for the summer. Can't go to the gym in there feeling bad. Like, come on, man. So I got – we can do one more character. I, I, I do, like, 15, 20 minutes, but I, I definitely got to take some meds. I'm like a hot shower and stuff, man. This shit ain't right. Oh, boy. Good old Charles, man. Man, Charles is going to be all right. All Charles needs to do is go to Atlanta. See, that's one thing, though. Like, especially if, if my son got some money. Blondie G. Okay. Gin. All right. Look, my eyes are puffy. I look like a fucking raccoon. Not a coon, a raccoon. You know what I'm saying? I got the puffy eyes and shit. Oh, man. It's terrible, bro. Uh, let's talk. What did Jen make any mistakes? Hold on. I think Jen made a Monday move. All right. Let's see. 120 for Lucia. Yeah, it is my allergies, man. I woke up Sunday and I went downstairs washing my clothes. Like my whole car is like, and I. Well, I'm in my garage, but it's not really a garage. Like, it's an opening right here on my patio. So it's like, when I went downstairs, it's like all kinds of pollen on top of my hood. I'm like, man, ain't no way, bro. And ever since Sunday morning when I woke up, man, I ain't been right. All right. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. This is Monday Mistakes. We talked about Vince. And we found out that he is an unknown unknown, but he made a Monday move. We can't call it a mistake until next week when we can verify which side he's really on. We talked about Lucille and how she needs to let Dr. Reese know, hey, Reese, you really fucking things up. Charles might fuck you up. There's a fuck around, find out thing going around, and I don't know if you want to catch that. So now we're going to talk about Jen, but I really don't think that Jen made any mistakes, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? I don't think Jen really made no mistakes. Jen is actually bouncing back. The only thing, the only mistake that I seen from Jen was really 
these damn blinds. But yeah, we'll we'll talk about Jim. Oh boy. All right. So Detective Jen. All right, so Detective Jen's house is still shot up. The first mistake that Detective Jen had, how many days do you guys think have passed since this shooting happened? How many days have passed since the shooting happened? Now, it couldn't have been one day. Y'all gonna say it couldn't be one day, TP, because they already had the funeral and everything. So it had to be a couple of days. And it was at least one day from Meech going from St. Louis, I mean, from Atlanta to St. Louis. Because Atlanta to Kansas City, I used to drive Atlanta to Kansas City is 12 hours. So eight hours to St. Louis. And we know it's an eight hour drive from Detroit to St. Louis because old boy wrecked the truck. Two weeks. All right, we'll just do two weeks. I, I could have sworn I heard like two weeks also. But Jen's mistake is, no matter how much time passed, why is his blood still on the carpet? Why has blood been on the carpet for two weeks? Not blood droplets. Why is there a puddle of blood still on the floor and your dad is cleaning up while you writing in your journal? I wouldn't even be cleaning this up with that amount of blood. This rug, we rolling this rug up. We throwing this rug out. We ain't even putting this rug in our, in our, in our trash, like in the trash area. We're going to take this down the street to one of those alleys and we're going to donate it to the bums. We're going to throw that motherfucker out of there. Yeah, your house was a crime scene, but it's been a week and a half, two weeks. Forensics have been through here. We got a dead body. Look how Jen, look, look at Jen, though. It's a crime scene, but Jen's over there with her feet up and she's sitting like this. Dear Diary. I lost another, hmm, no, I won't say another. Dear Diary, today as I sit here with the, the scent of blood in the air, I realize that my father is the only one in my corner. Emerson, she was, she was like a sister to me, but instead of popping her cherry, they popped her cherry. I was supposed to be the cherry popper, but they popped her cherry. Like, man, crime scene or not, get this shit up. The blinds are all toe up. Man, I would have been, I don't even know what they got up there, but what was around back then? Ain't wasn't no Home Depots. Man, what, man, man I would have had the blinds closed. You had to get all new windows. Damn. That's the first mistake, leaving that blood down there. Ace Hardware. Hey, you know, someone tried to scam me from Ace Hardware. I've been getting emails. Well, not anymore. Back in like 2018, I was getting emails from Ace Hardware, but I hadn't been in Kansas City since I moved out of Kansas City in 2009. I've never moved back. Well, except for these last couple of months before I relocated over here, but I wasn't really living there. But I was always getting emails and like invoices. Somebody had tried to use my card at Ace, uh, Ace Hardware one day. I had a call and I'm like, hey, nigga. The fuck? I'm in Arizona, bro. Oh, well, your card is on file. Hey, nigga, my card ain't on no file. Take this shit off of there. 
My dad used to go to Ace Hardware, but he never used my card. So I don't know how they got that shit, but it is what it is. I got it off of there, though. Now, her dad, he looks like he plays in Shogun, but he's the only one that Jen has in her corner. Now, what would we say is the mistake? Is trying to go after Henry by herself a mistake, or will we say working with Brian? Which one would be the bigger mistake? Because, I mean, she did, she did make it happen with Henry. Now, this could get ugly for her. It could get ugly for her eventually, but as of right now, it's working out. Unless, if she can get Henry to come over and have some one-on-one, -on -one, and then Brian shows up and they take, take her out that way, equal mistakes. Because, wait a minute, where is, where is Blondie? They said blinds have more fun. I never understood that. Like, blinds have more fun. When did she go after Henry? Oh, it was towards the end. Okay, it was after Vince. Now, do you think... Well, this is just this is really a more of a mistake on Henry for being thirsty. Jen is just doing undercover, but Henry ain't do like no kind of investigating. We already know that this nigga Lenny done been jammed up. Remember, in Detroit, no disrespect to my Detroit players, but in Detroit, a popsicle, uh, a glizzy, uh, some ice cream, strawberry shortcake, that'll get niggas to flip over there. No disrespect to my niggas in Detroit, but Lenny, remember, they kicked in Lenny's door and they said they was going to get some strawberry shortcake. This nigga is trying to set Henry up for some strawberry shortcake and to get a plea agreement, a little plea deal. Hey, if you guys are Lenny, if you guys are Lenny, are y'all doing this? Are y'all risking, like, bringing her here? or? Like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't believe in like that, that, that setting people up or like snitching stuff. I don't do no crimes to this level, to this extent where I would need to do any of this. But I don't believe in potentially risking my life. Like, if I'm gonna help Jen out, not saying that I would, but come on, man, this is risky as hell because if Henry lives. She's going to be like, Lenny, you were the one that introduced me to that woman. This is like, this is risky as hell. Yeah, Jen is suspended right now. So Jen is doing this all on her own. What's up, Alicia? Now nah, you right on time. You good. Jen is suspended. She's doing this on her own. So that means she had a body. Hey, did y'all think y'all think Jen had this wig already? Y'all think Jen already had this wig and she just went to buy it for this undercover? Be real. I think Jen was already a little freak on the side, so I think she may have already had this wig, just in you're know, saying in the in the in the storage. I'm thinking Jen already had this lined up. Like this is in the house. She was just waiting to bring it out. It's just she's been working on the force so long. She's been working on the force so long. She never had an opportunity to bring out that side. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that Jen had that mug already, man. See, I don't, 
I know we talking about Jen and her mistakes. I don't really think Jen made any mistakes because we still don't know what name she gave. She's working with Bryant. Now, the mistake might be working with Bryant. Bryant might be the one to fuck this up. I mean, we do. This is what we talk about with the known unknown. We know that Brian is going to survive. We don't know if Jen is going to survive. So maybe Jen tries to set this shit up and Brian tries to, because remember, Brian said, next time you meet with her, let me know before. Oh, man, Brian might get Jen killed. Oh, they got a Hennessy bottle back here, too. Y'all see that? They got the Hennessy bottle back here. Oh, man. Could Brian be the one to make this whole operation crumble? Yeah, nigga, but you you know how co-workers are. You know, you you really can't say a co-worker's a freak. Yeah, you know I mean, a co-worker, that's just natural. Like that, that, that just not saying you should mess with your co-worker, but I'm just saying, you know, saying most of the time you can always knock down a co-worker. Y'all around each other so much, it's like, all right, we gotta cooperate. It's rather we like each other than disagree with each other. Plus, when you at work with somebody, you like number three, number four anyway. You know what I'm saying? But when you're on the force, you got to understand. Detective Brian's wife left him. We don't know who Jen was really involved with. It's like, you know, sometimes it'd be like that. Imagine it's a Tuesday night. Y'all ain't got nothing going on. You and Jen, y'all undercover. Y'all on the stakeout. Y'all got some food. You doze off. You wake up. She talking to you. Because I had a situation like that before. I remember I was out with this one girl. Well, this happened multiple times. I was out with this one girl. We out, we chilling, and we talking. Man, I didn't doze off while she's talking to me. I woke up, she's still talking. I don't remember what the fuck she was talking about. Man, that shit happens more often than you think, man. I'm an old nigga, so I be falling asleep. They be talking. I be like, yep, mm-hmm. I wake up, did you fall asleep? Nah, they just keep talking. I don't remember what the hell they talking about, so I got to change the subject so it'll be something I know we talking about. Man, that that be the you looking like what you say? No, nah, I, I wouldn't sleep. No, 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 no. I heard what you say here. Hey, y'all know y'all ain't never had that before. You ain't never been out with somebody and they talking to you. And it's not that they born or anything. You just doze off. You like. And it's kind of dark. So you really can't see if a nigga is up or not. But they just talking. And I wake up and they just still talking. I'm like, damn, I, I don't even know what we talking about right now. I'm just saying. See, Matthew, you know, look, Miss Zoe, no. You be in there sleeping like, damn. You wake up. It ain't like you sleep, sleep. You just took like a six minute nap. <laughs> you just took like a five to six minute. Yeah, damn, that's crazy for real. Now nah, I don't even know why they be acting for real. That's messed up. Nah, I couldn't even see myself doing nothing like that. You ain't even. You don't even know what's going on. But these are just generic things that you can say to just try to figure out what the hell is going on. It's kind of like a psychic. You know, a psychic to say, "Hey, did you have a rough day today?" And you'll be like, "Yeah, I did." Well, tomorrow's going to be better. Oh, for real? It's, it's just bullshit. But that's all it is. You just wake up and just get back in the comments. Damn, I, nah, I couldn't see him. Nah, damn, you, you, and you got to flip it back on them, too. So do you think, do you think if the situation was different, what would you do? So now they're going to retell, you're going to retell you everything that they just said. They're going to give it from their perspective. So now, it's like, oh, okay. Oh, no, nah, I wouldn't do nothing like that. <laughs> That's how it was. So Brian and Jen were out and about, you know what I'm saying, on the stakeout. He dozed off. Jen's talking to him about, like, old cases that she did. He wake up. And it's like, well, you know, I don't know if it's hay fever or it's the pollen, but Detective Jen looking a little good tonight. 
You know what I'm saying? Take the gin looking a little good tonight. I'm looking like, okay, I see why. I, I see why Brian did what Brian did. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Not nah, here. That ain't game. That's just life. That's just life. That's just life. You know me. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you true stories, man. But I'm waking up and I roll over and I see Jen with the the, the red lipstick, the thin lips, and the in the blonde wig. I'm like, huh? well, uh, what time it is? Ten thirty nine. Y'all hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. My name is Modi J. This is Monday Mistakes, and I'm looking at Detective Jen like. Uh, I ain't even gonna bullshit you or nothing, Jen. Like, you know, I've been feeling you for a while and shit. You know, we've been getting closer and closer. I know I've been peeping you, peeping me. You know what I'm saying? Why are you over there looking at me while my girl's standing there? You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at Detective Jen. I just woke up off this steakhouse. She's talking to me about some bullshit. I'm like, okay, this wig ain't too bad on you, girl. And then... And then she came and put that hand on his back. What y'all know about? Y'all know about Charles and the Charles and Mr. Mr. Fingers going across the body. She put that hand on his back. Hey, I say, don't threaten me with a good time. Don't threaten me with a good time. Jenny showed up in here smelling like liquor. Oh, oh. That nigga Brian said, keep him flowing. Keep him flowing. Look, Jen, oh. Whenever you get them, whenever you get them laughing like that, where they doing the, <laughs> when the head start tilting back and laughing, brother, you were on the right path. Now make sure it's consensual, but you were on the right path. You get them laughing, cool. But when you get them to, <laughs> the head start tilting back, the back of their head touching the, their shoulder, <laughs> my brother, she feeling the nigga. They ain't laughing that hard for niggas they ain't interested in. Nah, 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 nah. If they if they ain't interested in you, this is how you know if a woman ain't interested in you. You getting them to laugh. Whenever they do the laugh, when they gotta cover their face, they ain't interested in you. When they pull their head back, <laughs> they fucking with you. See, I'm a <laughs> type of nigga. Y'all the <laughs> they don't want you to. <laughs> it's a fake laugh. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. You gotta get it with the head. <laughs> <laughs> nah, see you, y'all don't. I, I listen. I know how to make people laugh. Well, yeah, like TP said, when they do that, <laughs> you got them. But when they do the, <laughs> they ain't fucking with you like that. Now, if you can get the <laughs> with a hand on the shoulder. Nigga, you win it. Why you the funny? Stand up, no. Do you do stand up, talking? Nigga, you got that funny. No, I don't, man. I just be talking, and sometimes it comes out funny. But I be trying to be serious, but people be thinking me as a joke. Or they do the knee grab. You don't let go my knee. You like, <laughs> this nigga most funny. Uh, I don't get no fake laughs. Once I see a fake laugh, I stop talking to him. You ain't laughing at my shit, then that guy's to go. I got to go. I'm just saying, Detective Jen's mistake is fucking with this nigga Bryant, bro. She didn't came back over here because listen, she suspended. This nigga fired. She didn't lost a partner. She trying to get with Henry, and she know well. From what we seen with Henry and uh Peaches. That might be pause on this. That might be too much for Detective Jen. So Detective Jen's coming back over to Brian. We know Henry's a little bit different when she get in that bedroom. I'm just saying, from what we saw, this ain't me making nothing. From what we saw, it's unfortunate. I seen it. Y'all seen it. We all seen it. We all adults. It is what it is. But Jen ain't ready for all of that. So that's why she came back to Brian, because she ain't got nowhere else to go. Her house smelling like blood. So I'm just saying. Kendall said, no, I don't. Sometimes it's game from the woman's point of view. Hey, well, run your game on me. I'm a full court type of nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm full court press. You want to play the game? Let's go. Let's play the game. 
I'm down to play the game too. 42. Hot, hot, hot. I'm talking about going deep. The case of five month old Jemiah Julius, you are not the father. That's one thing about me, Kendall. I can play the game too. I can play the game too. The case of five month old Jemiah Julius, you are not the father. We straight killers, yo. Nigga, it's just big me, nigga. Boom. I'm really like that. <laughs> All right, y'all. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button, man. I'm gonna get. It. I do gotta. I gotta. I gotta take some meds, man. I thought I was gonna be able to thug it out, but nah, man. I, I got because I keep turning the camera off. Like, man, I gotta. Man, come on, bro. Hey, but now hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button tomorrow. Um, what's tomorrow? It's supposed to be Tubi. Oh, so tomorrow I might do some articles. Tomorrow we might do the Mo. You know, Wednesday we definitely gotta do Shogun because we all the way up to episode nine. So I'm gonna try to piece all of that together from six to nine. But tomorrow we're going to probably do the Mo You Know. We're going to probably talk about Trump. Uh, we're going to see if there's any updates on the two women that were kidnapped in Kansas. I, th I think they found two bodies today. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about Trump's uh, jury selection. So we got a few things. We'll probably do the Mo You Know tomorrow. But hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. I appreciate all of you guys. Thank you all for joining the live. Uh, we're going to get back on this schedule, man. It's just... Just a lot of shit. We're gonna have that break in between BMF. Well, we're really not gonna have a break. Break. We'll have a break in between BMF and Ghost. But we got the shy coming up next week. We got um, next week we got them season two. So we got a lot of stuff coming in. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get back on a regular schedule. Once I start my other job, we'll be able to have more consistent lives. Cause you know I'm trying to hit the gym and everything else. But hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. I don't trust you. All right, man, I'm Old IJ, man. Thank y'all for tuning in. Remember, if you don't take anything from my channel, you can run, but you can't hide. Tomorrow's Tuesday. Don't work too hard, man. Slide into the weekend, man. Get prepared for the weekend. You know what I mean? Be safe. Don't drink and drive.